In this video, we'll be launching the topic of similarity and dilations. It's a pretty intuitive topic. It deals with proportions and making objects bigger or smaller in a comprehensive and coherent kind of way, uh, and making sure you maintain proportionality so that the original figure and the new figure are the same, just bigger or smaller. That's the basics of similarity. The definition of similarity is this, that two figures are similar if you can sequence some transformations, and transformations, recall, are the three we're familiar with, translations, rotations, and reflections, and or this fourth motion called a dilation. So if you can piece those four options, so slides, turns, and flips, along with this new option of growing and shrinking, to move one shape onto another, then those two shapes are similar. So by means of an example, if I, if I propose that these two shapes are similar to each other, then there should be some way of taking uh, a translation, for example, as my first step. Maybe I'll just translate like this. And then maybe I'll dilate after that, and then maybe translate again because the software is not perfect here. And by translating and dilating only, I'm able to, in this case, carry one shape onto the other, so thus these two shapes are indeed similar. So if you can sequence these steps together, then the shapes are similar. Now what does that word dilation mean? The word dilation has a specific meaning in math. A dilation is a non-rigid motion by which a shape shrinks or grows uh, a figure about a center by some scale factor, which means there are two key variables here. The center of dilation matters, and the scale factor also matters. So let's look at a brief uh, general example here to, to visualize what's happening here. If I have a shape, and I have some center of dilation that I'm going to dilate around, so I'm going to dilate my shape around that blue dot. What that means is we can visualize three, in this case, rays emanating out of that center that passes through the vertices or corners of the original shape. You then consider the distance that each corner of the original shape is from that center. So I have this distance right here, I have this smaller distance, and then I have this largest distance. Those three distances can be adjusted by making them longer or shorter, and if you do so proportionally, then your new shape can be dilated. Let me illustrate. If I go about the same amount again, I'm going to end up right over here. And if I go by this same amount again, I'm going to end up roughly over here. And if I go by this same amount over here, I should end up there. And if I connect these three new points, my shape should be similar to the previous one. Now, I kind of estimated here so you can see it looks off by just a little bit. But if you take a look at the two red shapes, if I highlight them, then these shapes would be similar to each other. So the center of dilation is right here. And the scale factor tells me how far I should move from that center. Now keep in mind, a shape could also shrink and create a dilation. So typically we think of a dilation like the eye doctor making our people larger. A dilation in math could also make a shape smaller. Important to keep that in mind. Figures that are similar have a couple of important properties. The first key property is that all of the angles are congruent. The corresponding angles, rather, are congruent. So matching angles are the same size. So that doesn't mean that everything grows or shrinks. The side lengths do, but the angles maintain their size. So for example, I propose that these two shapes are similar to each other, and by means of introduction, this new symbol that we're looking at, the tilde, is actually the symbol for uh, similarity. So in the same way that the congruent symbol is a shorthand for the word congruent, or the idea of congruence, that symbol can be used thusly. I could say that triangle A, B, C, is similar to triangle DEF. And if I say so, then, and or if it's given to me perhaps, then the following things are true. It says in the red there that all corresponding angles are the same, which means that angle A is going to be the same as angle D, or congruent to angle D. Uh, that means that angle B is going to be the same as angle E, and it means that angle C is going to be congruent to angle F. So in similar figures, corresponding angles are the same size, or congruence. They wouldn't be the same shape if they weren't, right? Angles are sort of a property of a shape. If you change the angles, it modifies the shape. But if we're just making it bigger or smaller, we should maintain those angular relationships. The side lengths, however, are not the same, pretty clearly. They are, however, proportional. And what that means is this, and this is less you know, straightforward, but very important. It means that the ratio of AB to its corresponding length of DE. So that ratio is going to be equivalent 
to the ratio of BC to EF. And it's also going to be equivalent, so all three of these must be equal in order for you to have similarity. AC is ratio with DF. So keep in mind, if these were congruent, I'd be able to mark them like this, but they're not congruent because one's obviously bigger than the other. This is sort of a non-standard notation, but I think it's a useful one. I'm just going to mark a little squiggly here, that similar symbol, to show that they're not the same, but they're related. They're, they're proportional, per se. And likewise, these here are also sort of similar to each other, and these here are also similar to each other. You won't see uh, most videos or textbooks using this, but I think it's just a, a good way to visualize it as you kind of keep track of all the moving parts. So in uh, similar figures, all the side lengths are in proportion, and all the angles are the same size to the matching angles in the other shape. Similar triangles uh, are a particular topic of study. As you can see here, these are similar triangles. But this is a lot of information. Three sides uh, in two shapes produce all of this information. However, when you're proving shapes similar, like with congruent uh, triangles, you don't actually need all this information. You can get away with just a few bits of information to prove whether or not two shapes are similar. We call that for congruence. We used to have three criteria, or, or sorry, four criteria, to prove shapes congruent. There were side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. For similarity, we only, need, we only have three criteria, and those criteria are these. The first one's pretty straightforward. It's called side, side, side similarity. What that means is that if all three sides are in proportion to the other, you don't need any angles at all. If the sides match in proportion, then the shapes are similar. So by means of an example, it's a very easy one. If you have three and five, and let's say six, not really drawn to scale, but you get the idea. You have another shape, and its lengths, let's say, are 10, uh, 12, and 6. Are these shapes similar? Well, let's, let's kind of think for a second. 3. If it matches with anything, it should match with the smallest of the sides over there, because 3 is the smallest among these, right? So 3 would match with 6. So what's the ratio of 3 to 6? Well, let's keep that on, on hold for now. Uh, 5 is the middle length. And over here, the middle length is 10. It's not as big as 12, but bigger than 6. So 5 is to 10. So, so far, it looks like things are pretty nice. Let's make sure that proportion holds for all three, side, side, side. The biggest two are 6 and 12. And what do you notice about all three of those proportions? They're all equivalent. They are all equal one half. So don't force them to be equal, but if they are indeed equal, which in this case we can quite clearly see they are, then these shapes are similar, and the rationale for their similarity is precisely this idea of side, side, side similarity. The second way to prove triangle similar is called angle-angle similarity. Only two bits of evidence. What angle-angle similarity says is this, that if you have two triangles that have two angles in common, then the triangles are similar. For example, if this angle right here is 30, and this angle is 30, that's one pair of matching angles. And if this angle right here is, let's say, uh, 85, and this is 85, and that is enough information with that limited case, no side lengths whatsoever, it, uh, with just two pairs of angles, thus these two shapes are indeed similar to each other. Now, why is that? Well, keep in mind, all triangles have 180 degrees in total, right? So the third angle sort of has to be the same amount in either case because of the, the limit of 180 for the number of degrees in a triangle. And so if all the angles are the same, one can imagine simply carrying one shape and laying it at the top of the other and making the smaller shape larger by dilating it, and that side lengths would fall into place. So angle-angle similarity, not much information, but enough information to prove two triangles similar. The third and final way to prove triangles are similar, it's called side-angle side similarity. You can probably see where this is going. If you have not three pairs of sides, but just two, so let's say we have, just by means of an example here, keeping it simple, let's say we have 10, and then we have 15, and then we have uh, 12, 18, I don't know if it's drawn to scale, but bear with me. And let's say that the angle in between here is 45 degrees. Are these really the same shape, just bigger and smaller? Well, 45 degrees doesn't necessarily guarantee that, because a lot of different shapes that have 45 degrees in them. But let's look at the corresponding ratios. 10 is to 15. That's these matching pairs. They're both the smaller of the two numbers. And 12 is to 18. Well, 10 over 15 simplifies, if I divide them both by 5, to 2 thirds. And 12 and 18 can both be divided by 6 to also give me 2 thirds. So hey, these
these side lengths are indeed in proportion, but not all three, so we don't have an example of side, side, side. But I do have a pair of matching angles in between those pair of correspondingly uh, similar proportional sides, and thus I have an example of side angle side similarity. So these shapes are indeed similar by side angle side. It's enough information to guarantee, even without this length, that these shapes are indeed similar to each other. So we have three examples of similarity here. Let's do a couple quick examples. I encourage you to pause and, uh, and ponder these, maybe sketch them out, and then see if you can determine whether or not they are similar to each other. So in the first set, we have a pair of 85, so that's, that's a pretty good start. And that's it. We don't have any other pairs that match, and we don't have any side lengths to work with either. So we've got to think here for a second. All triangles add up to make 180 degrees. So that means I can find this measurement right here. So from 180, I can take away 30, and that'll give me 150. And I can take away 85 from that, and that'll give me 65 degrees. So that corner right there is, well, wait a second, that's 65. Then I do have matching pairs, because 85 matches with 65, sorry, 85 and 65 matches with the other triangles of 65. So are these triangles similar? Yes, they are, by angle-angle similarity. The 85s match, the 65s match. You could also alternately find this angle, which surprise ends up being 30. You get the idea. Are these over here similar? We only have one pair of angles, so that's, that's a start, but not much of one. Uh, if 7 matches with anything, it should be 16 or 14. Well, 7 is less than 8, and 14 is less than 16. So 7 should match with 14, because they're both the babies of the pair. Likewise, the big siblings of 8 and 16 are the bigger of the two, so 8 and 16 would correspond. Are those equivalent ratios? Well, 7 14 is 1 half, 8 16 is also 1 half. So hey, these sides are indeed in proportion. I don't have a third side, but I do have an angle that's congruent in between them, so you might have already seen this, but this is an example of side, angle, side, similarity. So they are similar indeed. So the left and right shapes here and here are the same shape, simply bigger or smaller than the other. Finally, let's look at dilations on the coordinate plane, which are actually pretty straightforward, at least to start off with. They can get a little complicated, but uh, starting with the origin, dilations around the origin, dilations around the origin are actually pretty, pretty simple. So here we have a shape, ABC, and the task is dilated around the origin, 0, 0, with a scale factor of 2. And let me show you how simple this is. The coordinates of the original shape are uh, negative 2, 2, B is uh, 3, negative 3, and C is negative 4, negative 2. To dilate by a scale factor of 2 literally means we're scaling or multiplying or expanding all of our values by 2. So if I just literally multiply every number by 2, and this only works for the origin dilations, but that's the most common one, you end up with the new points. Which that should be positive 4. Uh, B prime would be 6, negative 6, and C prime would be negative 8, negative 4. And if I plot those, you'll see that it works out quite nicely. So negative 4, 4 would be A prime. B prime would be here at negative, at 6, negative 6, and C prime would be 8, negative 4, which is right there. And if you connect those, you'll see that you end up with, oops, let's use the straight edge tool. If you connect those cleanly, what do you know? You get a bigger version of the original shape. How much bigger? The sides are two times as long as the original, and you can visually verify that, or Use a distance formula and see that it does work out. So literally multiplying the coordinates by the scale factor is all you need to dilate a figure around the origin. But keep in mind the scale factor in this case was 2, and the shape got bigger. The scale factor will not always make a shape bigger. Let me illustrate with our last example. Same shape. This time our scale factor and the origin is still 0, 0, well the center is still 0, 0. Our scale factor this time is 1 half. So make a prediction. What's the shape going to do? If you guess shrink, uh, you're right. So the points are still uh, negative, uh, negative 2, 2. B is still 3, negative 3. And C is still negative 4, negative 2. The idea is still the same. You still multiply by, in this case, 1 half. So that your new points would be negative 1, 1. 1 and a half, negative 1 and a half. And negative 2, negative 1. 
And then if you plot those, and use more contrasting color, let's make them green here. Negative one one, negative one and a half, negative, uh, one and a half, negative one and a half for B prime, and a negative two, negative one. You have a nice small version of the shape. Same shape, just smaller, or dilated, or similar to rounded out. All right, I'll see you in class.